I'm Kirsten with Ambler Nutrition. Uh, I'm expanding into Springhouse, so you might see some things with my name, Kirsten Puskar and Springhouse Nutrition, but Kirsten Puskar Ambler Nutrition is going to be around for forever, probably. So um, last time we talked about general diabetes information and um, nutrition about it. Um, this time we are going to talk about food and uh, meal planning and, and how to optimize our health, um, having diabetes and um, having a healthy diet. So one thing I want to get out there first thing is the best diabetes diet is the most nutritious diet. So anytime you put food in your mouth, it has to be nutritious. If it's going to be empty calories, that's just going to increase your blood sugar. It's not going to help your heal. It's not going to help you heal. It's not going to help you um, deal with uh, high, blood pressure, high blood sugar and all of the, the problems that go with that. The best thing to do is have the most nutrition. Spoiler alert, we get almost 90% of our nutrition from plants. So whether it's broccoli or seeds and nuts, um, hummus and beans, um, all of those are very, very nutritious. Um, the animal meat has some zinc and some iron in it, but other than that, it's just a, a source of amino acids, which again, we can get through plants. Um, if you do not wanna go onto a plant-based diet and wanna keep your standard American diet, um, so long that half your plate is vegetables, um, that still can work. But you keep, the key is getting the vegetables into your diet for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and um, having half of your food on your plate be the volume be a vegetable. So if you are having um, a cup of uh, cereal, whether it's oatmeal or granola or whatever it is, you want to have the same amount or more of berries. Berries are the same as vegetables. They're very low in carbohydrates, high in fiber, and super high in nutrition. So anywhere you can sneak in some grapes or some blueberries, some strawberries, frozen, uh, I freeze dried, I don't know. I think some of the enzymes get ruined that way. But but definitely try to get either fresh or frozen or canned. That those uh, vegetables are very, very important. And like I said, berries are included in the vegetable group. <clears throat> kind of like tomatoes are, you know? Um, last time I uh, didn't get to go over the news. And there's a few things in here that, uh, I don't have my light on, that uh, I do want to cover. So I, Although we have this beautiful farmer's market and we're going to talk about food from the diabetes uh, conversation map, I want to start with the news this time. Um, however, I'm in my dining room. I never turn my light on. There we go. <laughs> A little bit more light for us all. Um, the first bit of news came um, on December, middle of December. Um, and it was studies that have shown there's ties between sucrose sweetened drinks to weight gain. Uh, sucrose is um, sucralose. Sucrose, that is a, um, sucralose is an artificial sweetener. So a, a do, adults who consumed uh, drinks sweetened with um, sucrose and sucralose uh, produced lower amounts of hunger suppressing hormone. That means they stayed hungry compared to those who consumed um, drinks with just straight glucose, which is sugar, according to the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. So um, just so you know, if you're going to drink an artificially sweetened drink, it's not going to calm your hunger down. It's it's going to make it worse, actually. Um, a, a dietitian was sharing tips for um, optimal metabolic health. So not getting caught up in the fad diets, prioritizing, prioritizing nutrient density and whole foods can boost metabolic health. So anybody who's on the verge of prediabetes and um, have a, a, a large uh, belly fat, um, getting into the metabolic syndrome, having more nutrient dense and whole foods really helps with that. That's vegetables, just to tell you. Um, so staying physically active, hydrated, drink plenty of water, take your weight and divide it by three. That's how many ounces you need. Um, and, and getting good sleep uh, contribute to all overall health as well as proper stress management and keeping uh, your vices in check, such as smoking and drinking and staying up late and housing and all that kind of thing. 70-30 uh, <laughs> rule. I'm not always 100%. Everything should be um, straight. Was there a question out there? Um, how much sugar is okay to have for a snack or meal? Good question. Um, when we look at the sugar on a, on a reading a label, just so mm -hmm. you know, the food manufacturing people know that we are looking at that sugar number and we want it to be low. So 
it will substitute out sugar for other carbohydrate um, fillers, such as dextrose, and there's a whole bunch of carrageenan, a bunch of different things. So they'll read on the list as like a chemical that you don't know, um, instead of saying uh, sugar cane or honey or sugar or whatever. And but however, the carbohydrates will still be high. So the sugar love, love the number will be low, and the carbohydrates will be what the true carbohydrates are. The carbohydrates are what makes our blood sugar go up. So does sugar, so does dextrose, so does a whole bunch of other things. But if you want to pay attention to sugar, you're going to be fooled by the um, food manufacturing company. So ignore that number. It is not true. The most important thing is the carbohydrates. And per meal, your body can handle 45 to 60 grams, but that is still a lot of work that your body has to do. So if you can have uh, between 15 and 30 uh, carbohydrates grams uh, per meal, you're gonna be in great shape. If you are doing things that are more active, then sure, go up to 45 or even 60. But um, we're talking about going to a hike, doing yard work, that kind of thing. But for a regular day, when we spend it, you know, walking around and, and doing stuff at our desk, uh, 15 to 30 grams of carbohydrates is what you want to look for. You don't want, if something says it has 60 carbohydrates in it, then just have half of it, you know, for that meal. But that that's a good question. Thank you. Um, okay, I had, a, I had a lack of follow-up too, because I've noticed on some of the... Um, labels it tells you um sugar but you also got to read underneath where it says added sugar because you can get fooled you, know? you you're fooled by anything that says sugar only okay. to get the truth of how many carbohydrates are in that food um there's fiber there's sugar there's all the fillers there are all these different things that bump up the carbohydrates and the carbohydrates are the ones that are very easily digested and it makes our sugar go up very fast so having a, a smaller amount of carbohydrates in the meal, like 15 to 30 grams, maybe 45 grams, that's fine. But once it gets into, like I said, 60 grams and you know you're not going to be doing anything active that day, just eat half of that item. Mm -hmm. but you want to have no more than 45 grams tops per meal. That's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So um, what would that be three times? Don't even think about the whole day. 135. 135. Yeah, well, if you don't have carbs for breakfast, you don't have carbs for lunch, and then you sit down at dinner and have 135 carbs, your sugar is going to go up. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> so um, some of the other news. Um, there's a, a diabetes diet. Um, it is uh, high in nutrition, high in fiber, high in protein, uh, limited simple carbs. This is uh, also the Mediterranean diet. Uh, this diet has been shown to boost survival for breast cancer. So that's something to think about. Um, there's some food choices that um, are uh, pre preventing arthritis. Foods known to increase the risk of inflammation in the joints and affect arthritis symptoms include red meat, uh, processed foods, of course, sugar-sweetened beverages and foods, refined carbohydrates like white bread and uh, white rice and white pasta, uh, dairy, fried foods, um, according to this dietitian, and she advised on fo focusing on a diet of whole fruits and vegetables, as well as omega-3s like nuts and fish and whole grains to help reduce the inflammation in the joints. So there is diet that affects um, your um, arthritis. And honestly, all of us have a little bit of arthritis going on and anything that is anti-inflammatory is always going to make us feel a little bit better. Um, another doctor, she wrote in um, and overcome some of the barriers to having problems with diabetes. Uh, there's nine tips for success. I'm just going to go through the nine and not, not get into the detail, but try one more homemade meal each week. So think about, you know, heating up some uh, whole grain pasta or some lentil pasta. The red lentil pasta is delicious. Uh, sauteing up some vegetables with some red sauce, uh, having them together maybe with some meatless meatballs. Um, that would be a very quick meal you could make in about 15 minutes. But try one more homemade meal each week. Have one more serving of vegetables than you normally do. So again, if you're just having, um, you know, peanut butter toast or some eggs and sausages for breakfast, um, add some berries in there. Add some spinach with your eggs. Add just one more serving of vegetables, and you'll be great. A serving is anywhere from a half a cup of vegetables to um, a whole cup. It's as much as you want. Honestly, there's no serving size for vegetables. Uh, two cups of vegetables is like 35 calories, and it is so nutritious. 
Um, there's very few uh, carbohydrates in these foods. So just add some more vegetables to your meal. Have less sugar. Again, if you are somebody who needs to have uh, dark chocolate um, a few times a day, try to have it only you know on the weekends or try to have it on like Wednesdays and Saturdays or something like that, but just try having less sugar. Um, instead of having honey in your straight black tea, try the herbal teas, the chamomile and the orange pico and stuff that have these great flavors that you don't have to add the sugar to. Positive influences. Be around people who are on your same uh, scale. Don't hang out with people who are on this standard American diet with no vegetables if, um, you know, you want to have more vegetables in your life. So be with um, straight minded people. Um, there's a question here. How are calories? Uh oh. I got to see how that, where did my chat go? It says, there it is. I'm sorry. It says, how are calories calculated for foods? I heard protein contains four calories per gram. Carbs are four calories and fat is nine calories per, per gram. Uh, beer and alcohol, he's wondering, and maybe seven calories. Do you subtract the fiber? Thanks for Ted. Um, yes, so calories, Calories are really complex and they're a pain in the neck. Um, they're really invented in the 1970s to sell low calorie food. Um, I would prefer that you don't count, count calories because honestly, uh, it, it is a pain. If you want to go onto an app on your phone, like um, myplate.gov or uh, myfitnesspal, uh, there's Lose It. There's a bunch of different apps on your phone where you type in your food and it will tell you how many calories it is. And you can look at your day and see if you are in the 300 to 400 calorie, 1,000 calorie range, or if you're in the 800 to 900 calorie range. But the ballpark is um, an idea, I feel, the best way to figure out your food Half your plate is a plant, whether it's broccoli or, you know, strawberries or, um, you know, <laughs> all the vegetables are leaving me right now. Half your plate is a salad and half your plate is roasted vegetables, a quarter of your plate. And I'm talking about an eight or nine inch diameter plate. I'm not talking about these 16 inch diameter plates, at fancy restaurants, you know, get yourself a, a normal size plate and um, a quarter of it would be a starch, a quarter of it would be protein. Um, whether it's tofu or hummus or um, well, hummus is going to be carb and protein together. But basically, if you're going to have a cup of chicken, you want two cups of vegetables. And that would be a better way to um, uh, scale your foods. But you're right. If you want to measure the um, the only thing is grams of protein. I have a sheet about that. But um, every ounce of protein is seven grams of protein. So every ounce of of a fish or chicken or beef is seven grams of protein. This gets into really complicated thing. I would prefer that um, you look at dividing your plate. As for beverages, a glass of juice or beer or soda is going to be the same as a slice of bread. Um, it's gonna have 15 to, oh no, it's gonna have 30. It's gonna be two slices of bread. So I would not drink, um, uh, you know, these high calorie sweetened beverages. I'm um, going out once a week and having a beer. That's not a big deal for men. Two beers, you can still handle it. Um, again, this is going to be 150 calories a glass. Um, a meal, if you are having a 2000 calorie meal, uh, you know, for per day, you're looking at 700 calories per meal. And if 350 of that is from two beers, that really restricts how much nutritious food you can have. So again, I'm a 70-30 type of person. 70% is uh, being healthy and watching your most nutrition. 30% of your time is um, enjoying a beer and going out with your friends and, you know, that kind of getting off the wagon, let's quote. So as for calories, um, yeah, just watch out for grease. Grease, when you eat it, goes into your bloodstream. Where does it go? It blocks your insulin receptors. So insulin comes to get the sugar out of your blood. Nope, can't get into the receptors. The sugar stays in your bloodstream, raises your blood sugar, and your liver notices this and saves all those nutrients for when we are starving. You know, back in the day, cave, cavemen uh, didn't have hardly any food. And unfortunately, a lot of people in the United States right now don't have a lot of food. So when you have a lot of blood uh, sugar in your blood, the liver saves it for when you are not eating. Generally, it's for overnight, but any excess turns into fat. Again, it's better to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Half your day is vegetables and, and, and count that way. Um, but definitely, you know, 
once a week or twice a week, you know, be with your friends and be social. If you're going to have a beer, have a water with it, you know, alternate. Don't let's just have four beers, have two beers and two waters, that kind of thing. I'm really getting off uh, that topic, but it's very important to know that calories were developed by food companies to sell low calorie food. Don't think about that. I would rather you think about what vegetables am I gonna eat? Is there some baby carrots? Is there sliced apples? Is there um, you know, the, baby, the cherry tomatoes that I can dip into some hummus or apples with peanut butter? If I need a little snack, maybe I didn't have as much for breakfast. I should be having more for breakfast. And, and definitely including breakfast as a low carbohydrate, high protein meal. You don't wanna start your day with high blood sugar. You, you, if you don't want to have the end of the day of high blood sugar either. But um, anyway, think about the, the vegetables and think about the proteins. Um, some other some other news. Um, black eyed peas may be the key to a healthier gut. Um, black eyed peas contain a wide range of nutrients such as protein, copper, folate, vitamin. According to this dietitian who also said one cup serving also has 16 grams of fiber which could help improve gut health. So um, yeah, the, the way our body is balanced and we get the maximum nutrition is from these bacteria that live in our stomach and our intestines. Uh, that's our gut biome and they love uh, vegetable fiber, including from black eyed peas. Um, was there another question? Darlene, you didn't have a question right now. So, no. okay. Um, some other questions is, Five, so on our dietitian uh, lists five principles for losing weight healthfully. So cultivating a healthy eating habit, such as enjoying vegetables and whole foods, as well as learning the difference between emotional eating and physical hunger, um, can are just the, some of the foundations of weight loss. Um, she also noted that addressing sleep and stress issues, choosing to work out and feel good and not just lose weight, but yeah, finding an activity that whether it's dancing or gardening or hiking, something that keeps you active that you enjoy, um, that is a big part of having a healthy body and getting back on track with um, excess weight loss. Um, having a strong sense of self-efficacy, meaning I can do this, doing things that you know you can do, that you're comfortable doing and you enjoy, um, feeling that when you have a little bit of success, you can build on that and have more success. That is the goal. So don't try to do something that you have never done before or you think might be impossible. Try things that you are already doing, even when you're making small changes. I try to find things that people are already doing, like somebody who likes green beans. Well, instead of having three or four green beans, let's have half a plate of them. How do you like, do you want to chop them up? Do you want to put some garlic salt on them? You know, thinking about making a small change of something you already eat, just having more of that vegetable. Oh, more midlife physical activity curbs later brain damage. So again, <laughs> the exercise is great for your heart. It's great for your blood sugar, but it's also great for healing and getting the blood into all different parts of our bodies. So think about every day being active sometime in the morning and sometime in the evening, uh, whether you're going to do, like I said, anything that you enjoy. Um, I have some people who are on exercise bikes. To me, I would hate that. But they watch these game shows and they get all revved up and it's 15, 20 minutes and, and they enjoy it. They look forward to that. On the last page of my news, uh, different articles are, um, let me see if there's anything. Oh, I already talked about that one. Oh, talked about that one. And it uh, looks like I covered everything. So let's get on to uh, this conversation map. And like I said, last time, I'm sorry that I cut things off a little well. You know, I had to tell you what I had to tell you, and that was about it. So um, this time we started with the news. Um, we're going to go into um, this conversation map. It's um, a, a little journey, as you say, going up and down Main Street here. Um, here's a bunch of people that are sitting at a, a picnic table having a meal together. Um, and then after the meal, they're going to have some ice cream. Um, if you are somebody who has to watch your blood sugar or watch your weight um, during the meal, you're going to aim for the protein and the vegetables and the whole grains, but not the simple carbohydrates. You're going to leave away, leave the bread alone. You're going to leave, um, maybe they have some whole grain couscous or some quinoa. That would be fine, a half a cup or something small. Um, but save your carbohydrates for the dessert and have the dessert right after meal. When you eat, your blood sugar goes up, whether you have diabetes or not. Don't wait two hours or an hour after the meal to have the dessert. The, the insulin is there and it can get rid of that blood sugar right away. Put it into the cells where we can use it. 
So definitely this grumpy man here standing, he feels he can't have the ice cream. That is not the case. Uh, have If you know you're gonna have a dessert and have less carbs with the meal. And then uh, potluck dinners. If you know that <laughs> your family is like mine and there's marshmallows in the jello and, and all these kind of things that you can't eat uh, you know, for a healthy body, um, bring something healthy that you enjoy. Uh, it might spark them to taste it and they're, they're gonna think about, hey, maybe I do like broccoli salad with some uh, cranberries and some vinegar and sugar and salt and, and these kind of different recipes. So um, I actually have, um, I found an, an, an interesting recipe. It is called, um, amazing roasted vegetables. And if you go to amblernutrition.com and write to me, I can email it to you. Um, or if you happen to have my email from a lot of my patients out there have my email, um, kfpuskar at gmail.com. Write to me and I'll send it to you. But basically it's butternut squash, sweet potato, delicata squash, red potato, carrot, onion, cauliflower, um, some chickpeas or white beans, um, maybe a little bit of raisins. Um, you chop them all up into one inch pieces and you add Moroccan spices. So Moroccan spices is turmeric, you know, anti-inflammatory. Cumin seeds, same. Uh, smoked paprika, curry powder, again, anti-inflammatory. Um, the, the dash, no salt. I like the um, garlic herb um, with a little bit of salt, uh, ground pepper and a tablespoon of olive oil, a tablespoon of uh, coconut oil, and a tablespoon of uh, cider vinegar. So it's a little bit of a sweet, salty, spicy type of uh, a mixture. It's delightful. And you, you mix that all together in a bowl, put it in a glass pan, bake it for like an hour or two. Um, and then you can have it on any whole grain, whether you're going to do the whole grain couscous, if you're going to do the quinoa. If you wanted to do it on brown rice, um, if you wanted it be great on a salad too, I think I might actually have that today for lunch. But um, again, this makes probably eight or 10 servings. So um, you cook it once, um, you put it in the freezer, and then you can make the rice or whatever, or leftover rice from, from when you had different dishes take out. You can put this on top and, and you know what? You don't have to make the Moroccan. You can put in your Italian spices, your uh, basil and oregano and uh, thyme. That's delicious. You can make it um, Indian. Just do curry with some red peppers and, and that kind of thing. You can make it Asian with, um, you know, the ginger and the garlic and um, soy sauce and, and some vegetable broth and that kind of thing. So there's all different kinds of ways you can do this. And, and you can even change these vegetables. Make them the vegetables that you like. If, if you like broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage, oh, cabbage would be great in this. Um, if you want to do more grilled kind of things where you would do um, tomatoes and red peppers and zucchinis and eggplant, you know, make it how you like, but roasting vegetables and this one with the Moroccan spices is just delightful. Um, like I said, contact me and uh, yeah, I think if you Google Ampoule Nutrition, my, my information will come up. So again, these are ideas to do for a, for yourself or your family so that you can make it once and take it out of the freezer and eat it many, many, many times, which is my goal, or you can bring it to a, um, a cook app, you know, a are we even having potlucks anymore? <laughs> Once we get back to having potlucks, that's a really great recipe. Um, up at the top here, we have the grocery store. The biggest thing about um, eating healthy is planning your meals. And don't think about, oh, am I going to have chicken? Am I going to have pork? Am I going to have beef? Think about what vegetables you're going to have. Are you going to have a Moroccan dish? Are you going to have an Italian dish or, you know, the uh, Asian dish? Whatever you're going to think about, think about the vegetables. Um, and anything can go with it. Chicken tastes like anything. So if, it, if you need to have chicken in the diet, yay. If you want to go with the plant-based uh, proteins, again, there's a smoky tofu. There is an Asian tofu. There is already baked and marinated. Just take it out of the package, slice it up, put it in your stir fry, put it in your roasted vegetables. Um, I think this would go really well with um, a smoky tempeh. That's the soybeans that have been pressed called steak and bacon. <laughs> have some recipes for that too. But looking at the plant-based proteins are lower in fat. Again, so it doesn't block your, inceptor, your uh, insulin receptors. You can lose weight, um, but also they have a lot of protein. So if you're looking to build muscle, uh, plant-based proteins are a great solution. Whether they're the tempeh, the seitan, the um, tofu, or the combination like the Impossible Burger, the Beyond Meat. Um, there's, um, here's a little example of the bacon bacon. It's the Smoky Tempeh by uh, Light Life. Um, this sausage is amazing. It's called Gimme Lean. 
Um, I, I, I use that as a breakfast sausage hash that I'll do with all different kinds of onions and peppers and stuff like that. Um, there's these smart grounds. This one is Mexican, but you can get it in regular. If you're going to add beef to your um, spaghetti sauce, or if you're going to make tacos, again, these are a combination of tempeh and seitan and tofu, and they're just delicious. Is there any questions? Um, in terms of meal, is it okay to eat two meals a day, or should you try to space and have three? Um, what's a good? That is a great question because I find a lot of people. Um, later in life mostly, but other people too, they only eat two meals a day and that is perfectly fine. If your uh, meals are going to be more like an afternoon lunch and an evening dinner, I want you to have a little bit of something when you get up. It doesn't have to be a whole meal, a handful of blueberries and a couple of walnuts, that will do it. If you're gonna skip that breakfast, again, I'd like you to have a little bit of nutrients in the beginning of the day within two hours of getting out of bed. Um, after um, an hour and a half, two hours of, of walking around and doing things, our blood sugar increases. And um, who wants to start the day with high blood sugar? So when you wake up within, you know, like I said, an hour of getting out of bed, hour and a half, um, have like a little handful of berries. If you want to have a little piece of peanut butter toast with some strawberries, um, if you're going to have a banana, that's a high, that's a very easy to digest carb. So if you're going to have a banana, you want to have either some peanut butter with it or some nuts, um, leftovers from the night before, have <laughs> a little bit of, but just a little something so that, you know, if you're going to have your regular lunch around 11 and your dinner around five, that will work out just fine. And the same thing for people who are getting up at six um, and they have this huge breakfast at seven and then they'll have something else like around, I don't know, I have to look at my watch. If they're having something around seven, they want to have uh, like a little snack in the middle of the day, maybe some cheese and crackers, maybe some uh, apples and peanut butter. And then at seven o'clock, they have their big meal. I have another question on the chat. Can you explain a little about using body mass index? Uh, as you get older, they said they, we lose our body mass each year, or muscle mass each year. Um, and please use waist size more reliable than the scale of, or of body mass. For example, your height to waist. Uh, for a guy, I should have a goal of 40 inches, and my wife says 35 for ladies. So um, BMI, this is a chart that the insurance companies use for calculating if people are malnourished or if they're obese. So I, if you were to take the BMI of Arnold Schwarzenegger or any of these huge muscle builders, they would be morbidly obese. And you know they are not obese. They just have a lot of muscle. And a lot of muscle is fantastic. Muscle is the uh, fountain of youth. That is the first thing your body digests when you get sick. So we want to be able to have really strong thigh muscles. Um, you want to be able to sit in a chair and stand straight up without putting your arms down. That will show that you have enough uh, leg muscle. And same thing, a lot of women, we don't have a lot of arm muscle. We go down to Philly and we try to push those revolving doors and we get stuck in there because we just can't push it. So, you know, try to do upper body exercises and build your muscles. You don't want to have a bony shoulder. That's the one thing they look for. So, um, yes. When we are over 35 years old, if you can believe it, there's a gene that makes muscle. And after that age, that gene pretty much shuts off. So if we include enough protein in our diet, that will gene will turn back on um, and make muscle for us. Um, so every meal needs to have some protein, whether again, it's seeds or nuts or beans, or whether um, it's a plant-based protein, or if you're gonna go full hog and get the eggs and the beef and the chicken and all that. There is no difference between animal, between all the animals. So if you think you're eating healthier by not having beef and having uh, salmon, that is not the case. That still adds, uh, it's still hard on your body. So animal wise, we won't, don't wanna do seven to 14, 21 meals a day of animal protein. We wanna limit to like, you know, four or seven, something like that. Um, let me think. So the protein, we want to have protein in our diet that helps turn on that uh, muscle, that gene so that we can make muscle and yes, um, uh, what is it called? Um, metabolic syndrome. So if your belly is larger than 40 inches, if you measure around your waist, the, the um, most narrow part. So, you know, if you raise your arms and you twist like this, you can see where the narrowest part of your belly is and you measure around that. And if you're a guy and it's uh, 40 inches or more, you do have the beginning of metabolic syndrome. So this could be, you're not sleeping well, you're not exercising daily, you're having excess carbs in the evening. There's so many different causes, you have stress. 
um, these all these kind of things. So um, we want to get that under control. As for women, it's the same thing, but instead of 40 inches, it's 35 inches. And again, turn around and, and find the narrowest part of your waist and, and, and hold it in. We don't care about how much your intestines are, all that kind of thing. So um, if you can um, hold it in and hold your tummy in as small as you possibly can and then measure it. That is like exhale, do all that kind of thing to get the smallest measurement. That is the best thing. Okay, so we talked a little bit about meal planning. What are you going to do? Select your vegetables. Uh, looking at the labels, like I had mentioned earlier with a question, don't care one hoot about that stupid sugar. That is misleading. You just care about the carbohydrates and the protein. You want to see some protein in it. And if it's a food that, you know, like baby carrots or something, yeah, there's, I don't know, two grams of protein in it. That, that's not a protein source. There is protein in all foods. Uh, every half a cup of fruit has two grams of protein. Every cup of uh, vegetables has anywhere from five to eight grams of protein it's almost like an egg so so look at you know more the protein sources if you're looking at a granola bar for protein you'll be surprised it may only have two grams that's nothing if you need 15 to 20 grams of protein um how many of those granola bars are you gonna have to eat so yeah you know, so again take a look at the beans and the nuts and uh, and that kind of thing i do not recommend having protein bars regularly. If you need it a couple times a week because of how your schedule is crazy, that's fine. And definitely have some grapes or some, some kind of plant with it. You're going to be fine. But um, just have a, I know a guy and he was having a five or one bar uh, three times a day. <laughs> we got to get some meals. Yeah, uh, that's true. Um, here is um, challenges. We all have life. We don't just sit at a table all day. We have our life. And there's going to be family celebrations. Like I said, you know, you're going to have wine or cake or whatever it is. Save those carbs for the meat. Don't have very many carbs in the meal and have them afterwards with the celebration. Same thing with the dinner parties. I can't wait till we get together again. But bring a dish that you know you can eat and, um, and is very healthy. So if you had half of that for your meal and then the other half of your plate, was everybody else's dish. They all feel good and you know you're getting good nutrition at that dinner. Sporting events, give it up. <laughs> there is very little good food at sporting events. Um, you know, they're pizza and hoagies and stuff. Uh, I think the, the link for the Eagles, uh, they do have some really fancy restaurants. If you want to spend $40 for a hamburger, <laughs> sure, it comes with a salad and everything else, but I think the best thing is eat before you go. Um, maybe bring a snack with you and um, enjoy the foods with the other people but just know they're probably going to be low nutrition and high carb it's sad but it's the way it is um uh eating alone hey we're not with everybody all the time especially now we're sitting uh watching uh you know catching up on whatever show we're um what do they call that when they're uh <laughs> streaming all the shows and they take a plate binging, put your food binging. on it what'd you say binging binging <laughs> That's it. When you're binging on all those shows, um, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, have your plate, put your food on your plate, eat that plate. And then while you're watching the show, you will think that somebody ate all your food. Guess what? It's you. <laughs> so watch out for that. Um, don't sit there with the bag of popcorn. Yeah, popcorn is nutritious, but just know that um, you uh, have an appropriate size bowl. So popcorn is three cups. That's a lot of popcorn. So um, you could go back and forth with one cup or you could just have a big bowl that's three cups of popcorn popped and it's really good. Um, try to stay away from the processed food. You all know this kind of thing. Now you can get um, potato chips made out of sweet potatoes. Um, I've seen them at Aldi's and they're not terribly expensive like that Terra chips are. Um, you know, $2 a bag instead of 5 or $6. So think about the healthier snacks. Um, if if you want a really cheap way to have popcorn, you know, those brown lunch bags. Um, I love the microwave popcorn. I think it's so quick and you can take a brown lunch bag, you know, the paper, um, you fill it with a third of a cup of seeds. You roll down, you know, you fold down the, the top, you lay it on its side and you put it in the microwave for about two minutes. When you stop hearing the popping for two seconds, then you can take it out, pour it into a bowl. And I would say about maybe 10 or 20% of those seeds are not popped. So I put them, I separate them out, I put them those seeds back in the bag, put it back in the microwave for a minute, 
generally 90% of those seeds are done. And that way you've got all your popcorn seeds popped, drizzle it with, you know, a couple of tablespoons of olive oil or one tablespoon, whatever is good for you. Um, you know, put some uh, Parmesan cheese on it, a little uh, Jane's crazy mixed up salt or Mrs. Bash has a lot of great flavors. That's amazing popcorn and you get it in what, three minutes? So, and it's way less expensive than um, the microwave popcorn, no chemicals. And if your microwave is clean, unlike mine, you can use that bag a few times. So it's a third of a cup of seeds for two minutes. Um, don't do over and don't have the bag vertical. Don't twist the top of the bag. It can catch on fire. <laughs> Sorry to alarm you, but it, you know, just keep an eye on it. And when you hear it stops popping after you know, two, second, two minute break, two second breaks, then you know the popcorn is done. So um, serve yourself when you're having, um, you know, if you're going to binge movies or watch TV, the news. I mean, we can go through a couple of meals just sitting and watching the news. Food definitely for your mental health, pick a time of day that you're going to watch the news and then go on with your life. Um, it is uh, really crazy times these times, you know, with COVID, with um, the political situation, with the weather, I, all kinds of things. So um, try not to watch news more than one time a day. Um, enjoy, you know, other shows. There's so many different cooking shows. And of course, I love cooking shows, but gardening shows and sports and all that kind of thing. So it's great. Um, sick days. If you are taking diabetes medicine and you get sick, like you have the flu or you're throwing up, um, you're not eating any food, we still want you to take your medicine as you normally did. If you took it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, still take it breakfast, lunch, and dinner, even though you're not eating anything, and try to have a glass of water with all of that. That, again, it reduces our blood sugar. Whether we eat cake, we have a tooth infection, we break our leg, or we're throwing up, our blood sugar is through the roof. So keep with your medicine just like you normally do, because that will help reduce that blood sugar. Um, burger joint, this is, has to do with grease. Like I said, when you eat something that has oil in it, whether it's fried chicken or pesto, um, it's gonna, the first thing goes into your bloodstream and then it blocks your insulin receptors. And then you have high blood sugar until that fat gets out of there. And it can delay things anywhere from two to five hours. I mean, it really takes a long time when you have a greasy meal. So watch out for that. Uh, try, <laughs> try to squeeze, you know, fold your pizza, and let the oil drain out, put your um, veggie burger, whatever, in, in a paper towel to get the oil out. Um, if you're doing um, a hummus or a pesto, you don't have to add all that oil. It can just be a tablespoon and the rest of it can be either the juice from the can of beans or you can add straight water, um, you know, lemon juice, all of these different things that don't have oil in it. So think about that. Over here, Mike's Bar and Grill with the alcohol. Alcohol does not have carbs in it. It is a toxin that stresses our body. So if you're going to drink straight vodka thinking, hey, there's no mixer with it, it's going to have no carbs. It's going to stress your body. And like I said, when you're sick or uh, you have any other stresses, you're not getting enough sleep, your blood sugar is elevated. And then we have we have this beautiful. Oh, do I have any questions? Anybody have any questions? No, we're OK. Right now. OK, good. good, good I'm good. eating green. I'm eating green beans. Oh, I love green beans. Yeah. Green beans are hearty. Uh, this is one vegetable that if you feel that you're, um, you eat your food and you're not that full, <laughs> have a few more green beans. Boy, they are wonderful that way. So <laughs> here they have a whole bunch of stands. Um, back in 2014, they didn't know so much about the food groups and what was so important. I will just tell you the food groups are the carbohydrates and the fiber and the protein and the fat. Carbohydrates and the fiber are with the plants. The protein and the fat is with the proteins. Whether your protein is chicken, uh, dry turkey breast, there's still going to be a good amount of fat in it. That's why I'm promoting more of the uh, plant-based protein. Um, vitamins and phytonutrients and minerals, vitamins, uh, they are all in the plants mostly but they are also in some of the proteins, but mostly your, um, your, fi your fiber is only in your um, carbohydrate and plants. So if you think you're gonna have a, um, a plate of fish and you're gonna get enough fiber, you're gonna get zero fiber. It has to be some plants. So the fish would have to have either mashed potatoes or some green beans, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, water is important. Again, take your weight and divide by three. That's how many ounces you need. Um, if you have kidney disease, I would bump it up by a third or even 50%. 
So if you needed uh, 40 ounces of liquid and you had kidney disease, uh, 60 ounces would be fine. I don't know about 80 ounces. That might be too much um, water for your, uh, that's a lot of work for your kidneys to filter out. Um, I was talking with one woman and she was having over a gallon of water. She did need 60 ounces. That was, she was a larger woman. She was actually like close to 5'10". She was quite tall. And so she did need, you know, 60 ounces. So with kidney disease, she was drinking a gallon and her kidney disease was not getting better. And uh, then we knocked it back down to about 90 ounces, 80 ounces. And yeah, her kidneys got a lot better. So watch out for that. Um, but definitely we need water. Um, our cracked heels and toes and fingers in the winter, you know, we get enough water, we won't have that cracking. Same thing with, it's just so good for our skin and our eyes and our hair and our joints. Um, it, it fuels all of the enzymatic reactions when we eat the, the plants and we get the phytonutrients. They just do so much better when we have enough water. Um, yes, it's beautiful for your skin. Was there any other questions? Okay. Um, let's see, the other thing is, oh, the food groups. Okay, so here they have, they call it starches and they have bread and pasta. Um, but the starches are carbohydrates and carbohydrates are not only bread and pasta, they're also fruits. There's some, um, there's also the fruit um, and the fats and the sweets, like the cake and the donuts and pizza. So that is also gonna have starches in it. And the starches is just another word for carbohydrates. So some carbohydrates are sweet, you know, like donuts, and some are savory, like potatoes um, or bread or pasta or whatever. Take a look at the um, high protein pastas. This is the lentil pasta. Um, the yellow one and the red one are really doing good. I'm not a fan of the chickpea or the edamame. Chickpea is like a little pasty and edamame is a little rubbery. But, you know, take a look at um, the whole grain pastas and, and the lentil pastas. They have a lot of protein in them. Instead of two grams, it's 10. So per serving, so that's pretty nice. And having, um, you know, some broccoli in there with some sauce and different things, it really, I know that sounds weird. Think about what you like and make it your own. Um, the fruits are carbohydrates. Um, it says milk here, but I think they mean the combination, whether it's beans, which is half carbohydrates and protein, um, milk is half carbohydrates and protein, um, yogurt, and cheese, yogurt and cheese have less carbohydrates in them. They're going to be more protein, especially the Greek yogurt and drier cheeses like Swiss and cheddar and mozzarella, fresh mozzarella, Parmesan. These are all, the mozzarella is a lot of water, like the fresh mozzarella has a lot of water in it. Um, look out for the, the Gouda and the Munster and the provolone. Those are loaded with fat. You know, they go on the grilled cheese and it's just one big greasy mess. Again, blocks your insulin receptors, your sugar stays high, can gain weight. And it's not the good weight. You want to gain weight with muscle. Muscle, protein, you're having more protein in your diet, being active, having vegetables with the protein. The enzymes for the vegetable, vegetables work with the um, amino acids in the, pro, the chicken or the, the proteins to make more muscle. So um, there are tremendous uh, strong men, uh, bodybuilders, a lot of them are vegan. Look at the ox, look at the gorilla. They don't eat other animals. Uh, look at the lion, that little skinny thing sleeping all day. Think about that. <laughs> um, vegetables have hardly any carbohydrates at all. Yay. Broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, zucchini, eggplant, all of those. They're really full of nutrition, lots of great fiber, hardly any carbohydrates. Um, don't count serving size. Just eat as much as you can. Half your plate or more. Yay, snack on them. It would be great. Um, here it says meats, but they mean protein. So that is, um, you know, there's an animal version, which is the cheese, the eggs, the beef, chicken, the fish. And then there's the not animal versions, whether it's the nuts and seeds and beans, um, the tempeh, the tofu, and the seitan. And the combination of those, which is like Beyond Meat and the Impossible Burger and field roast sausages and like there's gimme lean breakfast sausage all of those are combinations and then here are the fats and the sweets fats and the sweets are a part important part of our lives i have to say so um if you had no chocolate in your life i'm sorry <laughs> have some chocolate everybody needs um, a little bit of sweet in your life and definitely have it on days when you're more active um and, and, and you know Maybe you don't have sweets every day, but, you know, having them with friends and family whenever we can ever get together again, um, that is a great thing. Um, I have a little, what time is it? Oh, we have 15 minutes. So I have a little quiz. Um, here's a description of a food group. And tell me if 
if you can, tell me if you think what it is. This is another name for sugars, fiber, and starches. Your body burns this for energy and needs more of this nutrient than any other. Do you know which one it is? You have the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, very All good, right. very good. Okay. The second one is, this nutrient helps you build and repair muscles, skin, and every cell in the body. Anybody have an idea of what that one is? Can you repeat it again? The nutrient that helps build and repair muscles, skin, and every cell in the body. Mm. Helps you build muscle. What, what food is that? It's a protein. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, we need protein to build muscles and, and our joints and our skin and all the cells. They need protein. And again, that the protein can be chicken or fish or beef or whatever but it can also be need seeds and nuts like sunflower seeds and and walnuts and uh, chia seeds all that kind of thing is really great so here's another nutrient this nutrient has more calories for per bite than any other nutrient it also supplies energy helps maintain healthy skin and helps transport some uh vitamins some vitamins are oil based did i give it away so that that nutrient that has the most calories is oil. So we want to watch out for that. Adults now, they think we don't need more than four tablespoons. If you're a big person, you need about four tablespoons. If you're a small person, two tablespoons is great. It's good for your skin, your eyes, your joints, um, but just two tablespoons is uh, a lot. It's, you know, um, a tablespoon is about 150 calories. So watch out for the butter and things like that. Again, I didn't mean to talk about calories, but just watch out for the oil. You don't need very much a uh, handful of walnuts per day and you're good. Um, Oh, this, here's another nutrient. This nutrient is essential for life and it does not have any calories. Anybody have any ideas? We need to drink it. <laughs> Water. Water is very important. And um, these nutrients are needed in small amounts for your body to work correctly. You must get these nutrients from food because your body can't make them. But that one is vitamins and uh, minerals and phytonutrients. So we get a lot of that from plants. That's why I keep pushing. Spoiler alert, we need more vegetables. Um, let's see, some other things I have. Okay, we talked about that, we talked about the food. Uh, along here, it says go for your goal. Um, some people need to gain weight, some people need to lose weight. Um, everybody is different and everybody is affected differently with different foods. So if you know that you have trouble with um, uh, those Portuguese rolls or uh, slices of cake from the holidays, it's still in the freezer. Um, give yourself a little bit, you know, don't say never. That's the worst you can do. Um, if you like something, we want to figure out a way to fit it into your diet. Maybe it's a carbohydrate. Maybe it's a fat. Maybe, maybe it's extra protein. Uh, my sister, she could just go crazy with a, a rotisserie chicken and not eat anything else. So that's why we say, you know, eat in moderation. We want to have a variety. We want to have the fiber, carbohydrates and the fiber, and we want to have the proteins and the fats. Um, and, and that is for your personal goal, whether, again, you want to gain weight or lose weight, you want to build your muscles. If you feel that, you know, your friends are going on a hike and you get tired after a half a mile, you know, you might need to have more carbohydrates that day. You might need to have more protein in your meal, you know, the weeks, the weeks beforehand. Um, and, and when you eat, like I said, there's some people who only eat two meals a day. If it's going to be lunch and dinner, have a little snack for breakfast. If you're going to have a big breakfast and a big dinner, have a little snack in the middle of the day. The best thing for people with diabetes is to have consistent um, nutrients all day long. Um, at nighttime, you know, after, you know, you're, if you go to bed at midnight, yeah, and you stop eating at 10 o'clock, you, you should be fine. If you find that your sugar drops in the evening, uh, you might need a snack. But uh, I find that a lot of people who are taking a snack in the nighttime, they're waking up with blood sugars in the 160s. So that isn't always the case. Um, these long acting like Basilar and Atlantis, these long acting insulins that some people take in the evenings, um, it really doesn't kick in for like six hours. And it lasts 24 hours or 12 hours, depending on which ones you have. But um, you don't need to have a snack with those. Now, this is for people who are waking up in the morning and having higher blood sugars. A lot of people don't want to measure their blood sugar. Um, they're pre-diabetes, they weren't given a glucometer. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons why people don't check their blood sugars. Um, but the most important thing is 
uh, if your blood sugar is under control, I'm not too concerned about it. But if you're in like the 250s and 300s all the time, then we need to find a way that we can help you uh, monitor your blood sugar, monitor your diet, monitor, again, all the different ways that your blood sugar goes up. Um, if you are not being active, if you don't get enough sleep, if you are stressing, you have a bad stress, things are not working out well, we have to figure that out so that you can relieve that stress. Um, if, um, let's see, you're not seeing your doctor. Oh, I only need to see him once a, a year. Well, something's wrong. Be in touch with them. The nurse will answer your question or get to the doctor and get back with you. But definitely keep in touch with your doctor. Um, monitor. You're monitoring your blood sugar, monitoring your um, your foot pain, monitoring, you know, what so I have one woman, she loves this Pepsi and she has to have it after a meal and she's not concerned because she only goes blind for 10 minutes. I'm like, ah, it kills me. <laughs> So that to me means that she's having the soda on an empty stomach. She's not balancing her meals. She's not getting the nutrients to, to heal that um, uh, you know, nerve damage. And, and she might not be getting enough exercise. So um, it's not just about what you eat, especially if you have a toothache or anything like this, that can also incre increase your blood sugar. I have another woman, <clears throat> excuse me, she uh, had vertigo, you know, the ear infection where you feel real dizzy. And uh, something happened and she ended up in the emergency room. They found out her blood sugar was 165. Now, this is this is like scary. She doesn't have diabetes, but her body is just so stressed from that vertigo. And vertigo is um, it, it causes fear. Um, it's, it's like getting off of the merry-go-round, you know, when you're little, you're really dizzy. So it's hard for you to walk around in things. Oh, I have I have an idea. I need to have four of these 16 ounce glasses a day. And to be honest with you, I can't tell if I've had two or if I've had my fourth. Let me have a drink. So I put four rubber bands on here. And as you see, I have three, I have three rubber bands right now. So every time I drink a glass, the whole glass down, I take the rubber band off. And so at the end of the day, I don't want to have any rubber bands on my glass. I don't have any water in there. And I want to have four rubber bands on the counter. That way I know that I drank my four 16 ounce glasses of water. I um, don't buy bottled water because I'm so cheap. <laughs> um, so that's how I do it. Um, if you need more than that, maybe you have five rubber bands. Maybe you only have three rubber bands. But every time you take, you know, drink the whole thing, then you take the rubber band off. And then you only have two rubber bands and you know you have to have um, that much water. But I, I found with COVID, just talking with my patients, we're just not sure how much we're drinking. It's great if you drink five different things like coffee and an orange tea and a water and a seltzer and then a chamomile tea at night. Great. If they're all 16 ounces, you're good. But I pretty much drink water. <laughs> I might have a, a maybe a little bit of V8, a little bit of tea and a little bit of a, a you know, milk or protein shake or something on my granola. But um, but that's another thing I wanted to talk about. I have a recipe for granola. The problem with granola when you buy from the store is it just has so much sugar in it. This is um, a huge mixing bowl with two tablespoons of syrup. And then I just bake it and it's wonderful. So contact me and I get to that recipe. Uh, a half a cup of this, this is this measuring cup in here. This is just a half a cup is uh, 10 grams of fiber, 10 grams of protein. It, it's a good thing. Another um, breakfast cereal is either the Special K protein or the Cashy Go Bean. These have uh, 14 grams of protein in it. So this is a half a cup of this with a half a cup of granola on there. That gets my protein and my fiber. I feel great. I have enough energy for the day. Um, and it's not high in carbohydrates because of so much fiber in there. There was a thing about if you take a food and it has 10 grams of fiber, you can take off 10 grams of carbohydrates. But they have found that is really not the case. Um, but just having less of these high, high carbohydrate foods with um, whole grains. And like I said, this, um, this cereal with only, you know, it's all seeds and nuts and oats and, and coconut um, and nuts. Um, it doesn't have a lot of carbohydrates in it. It's mostly fiber and, you know, a little bit of oats. Um, there's also now these protein pancakes. And if you just make it with water, it has 14 grams of protein in each uh, eight inch pancake. If you add it with milk or put an egg in there and mix it all up, then you're up to like 19 grams per pancake. So I, I don't really think of uh, uh, pancakes as a high protein food, but even the carbohydrates, 37 grams for one pancake. That's less than 45. So that would be a great option. Um, let's see. I think, oh, and uh, when, like I said, with the when to eat, you want to eat enough breakfast that you're not hungry for 
four to six hours. <laughs> if you need a snack, you didn't have enough breakfast. Same thing with lunch. You need a snack at two o'clock and you had lunch at 12, you didn't have enough lunch. So try to have a little bit more for lunch. And then for dinner, dinner is not your big meal. It should not be a lot of protein. It's hard to digest when you're not moving around and the sun goes down. Uh, there was all this research for GERD, you know, acid reflux. And they found that your stomach and your intestines work great when you're active, you're awake, you're, the sun is out, you're moving around, your digestion is fantastic. Once you're, the, the sun goes down and you're kind of done with your day and you're watching the news or whatever, um, it, it's better. It, you'll, end up, you'll end up gaining weight. Um, and mostly it's fat in the evening if you eat most of your calories after 3 p.m. So try to have most of your calories for breakfast and lunch. I know it doesn't fit into everyone's schedule, but figure out ways that you can do this. Um, and then you will uh, be better off with uh, losing weight, gaining muscle and, and doing better. Um, and you can't do it right off the bat. You have to have a, a, a small dinner to start off with. And it's going to be tough, but you have to wake up in the morning hungry. If you try to do this after you've had a big pasta dinner and you're not that hungry, eh, egg, some sausage, whatever, that's not going to be enough. But having more for breakfast and lunch is, is a great thing. Is there any other questions today? No, it's been great. It's been great having everybody. I'm so glad you could join me. It's a beautiful sunny day and uh, I'm looking forward to getting out and walking with the dog after I do all my charts and stuff. Mm. But I want everybody to stay healthy and, you know, wear a mask. It's so nice without, you know, a mask with Zoom, but I'd really rather be with everybody. It's, it's <laughs> so strange. Um, and again, don't watch the news all the time. <laughs> Think oh, about your God. mental health. Oh, one other thing I do um, every couple of weeks, I add um, a $7 bouquet of flowers. It oh, just okay. brings me so much joy. It lasts for a couple of weeks. Yeah, I might change the water once, but... Um, Hey, that's not too bad. Um, do you need to drink much water when losing sodium salts? Uh, sports athletes drink lots of Gatorade um, with protein, fats, and water. Please see my question. Okay, so um, this is a question about um, exercising and water. Um, yes, when you are more active and you sweat, um, you do need to drink more water, um, but usually a 16 ounce glass is fine. If you are uh, really active so much that your face is red, you're completely sweaty, and it's been over an hour, that's when it, you need to have the electrolytes from the Gatorade. But um, the salts can't, and the liquid does not get into your um, cells as well when you don't have some glucose. So again, having a snack, drinking water, that will be a really great thing to do. Um, but again, you don't need to drink Gatorade if you're only exercising for 20 minutes. <laughs> um, and it was really good to see everybody. Um, it's about one o'clock right now. So um, thank you for joining me. Have a great day. And I will see you again the beginning of February. So the first week and the second week, we talk about diabetes and food. At amblernutrition.com, uh, contact me and I will be happy to, or even maybe um, Mary Angela might be able to forward any questions. I can get you some recipes if you'd like. But I'm always here to help everybody with diabetes and, and eating healthier, um, kidney disease, just about anything, any kind of chronic disease and health, I I'm happy to do it. So thank you so much for joining me, uh, amblernutrition.com. My phone number is 215-527-4193 if you want to talk to me and send me a text. Um, have a great day, and uh, I'll see you in uh, the first weekend in February. I'm not sure what that Wednesday is, but thank you very much.